In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good evening. Good evening to all of you, and to all of you who are with us in the online balcony tonight. We see you too. Is it weird that I am over the moon, head over heels happy that it is Ash Wednesday? I mean, let's, let's be honest, that's, that's a little weird, right? Yeah, it is. Because let's face it, Ash Wednesday is a lot of things. It is meaningful, it is beautiful, it is somber and holy and true, but Ash Wednesday is not usually known for being a day that makes us happy. But if you, like me, are happy to be here tonight, it is probably because you also remember that the last thing we did in this place before our lives were forever turned upside down was Ash Wednesday 2020. Now, of course, we've been back in this place worshiping in person in one form or or another for almost a year now, since Easter of 2021, but it hasn't quite felt the same until very recently. There is something about tonight that makes it all feel like things are finally coming full circle. It sounds absurd, but this, y'all, is a happy Ash Wednesday. And maybe that should not be such a surprise because part of what this day tells us, and really part of what the whole Christian faith tells us, is that we serve an absurd God who makes absurd promises and calls us to do and to believe in absurd things. Do you all know what that word absurd actually means? It comes from Latin. It's a musical term. It literally means out of tune. You know, sometimes you hear something and it sounds just right. It all fits together. It makes perfect sense. But other times you hear something and it's, uh, it's off. It sounds a little wrong. It's, it's like it's not really supposed to be that way. Those two notes that just don't go together and your brain has a hard time making sense of it. That's what it means for something to be absurd. You want to talk about absurd? Last year's Ash Wednesday was absurd. Do you remember? We were still worshiping entirely online, but by God, I was determined that y'all were going to get your ashes. And so we planned it out, and we had one of our drive through communions, which was absurd. And with your drive through communion, we gave you little tiny bags of ashes to take home and put on your heads in your living rooms in front of your TVs, which was absurd. And of course, we had to order those little baggies ahead of time. And our beloved parish administrator, Emily, said, they don't make little Ziploc bags that small, do they? To which I said, oh yeah, they do. To which she said, well, whatever for? To which I said, drugs, Emily. (laughs) People use them to sell drugs. Which meant your parish administrator and your priest then found themselves Googling how to buy crack baggies online which was absurd. And don't even get me started on how we had to make some of the extra ashes to have enough for those little baggies. Because you see, you may not know this, the ashes for Ash Wednesday are always made from the dried up palm from the previous year's Palm Sunday. They have a whole year to dry out. But there had not been previous palm branches from the previous Palm Sunday. So what did I do? I did what any good priest would do. I stole palm branches from all over Tift County. I don't know if you know this, but palm branches usually grow in the desert, which means palm branches retain water, which means palm branches do not burn easily unless they've been drying out for a year, which means there I was a year ago on Ash Wednesday trying to dry out those palm branches by shoving them in the church microwave. (laughs) And when I finally got them dry enough to burn them out under the parish hall portico, because, you know, you got to be careful. You can't set fires inside buildings, except on Easter, but that's a whole other story for a later day. I'm out there at the parish hall portico. They finally did burn, but wouldn't you know it, a mighty gust of wind blew through, 
And 80% of those ashes went flying north and settled, I believe, somewhere in the vicinity of Dooley County and not on your precious little heads. Thank God it was a day of repentance, right? Because I said a lot of things in that moment for which I would need to repent. One of the things that I said in that moment was, why are we doing this? This is stupid. This is absurd. But you know what? We did it because it mattered. We did it because we needed God real bad. We needed each other. And we needed to be reminded that we are but dust, but we are God's dust. And because we are God's dust, we're going to be okay. That, my friends, is called hope. By its very nature, hope is always absurd. You have come here tonight, I believe, because you're looking for something. You could have done anything on this very pretty early spring Wednesday night, but you're here. And I don't think you're looking for half-truths or easy answers. You are looking for hope and for the absurdity of God. And here you will find it. For tonight, my friends, is the night when we are told that as bad as we are, the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. Tonight is the night when Jesus tells us that it's not about treasures and trophies because one day you are going to die and the treasures and trophies you have collected won't mean squat, but the love of God will. Tonight is the night when we proclaim that we are unknown yet well-known, dying yet alive, Punished, yet not killed. Sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Poor, yet making many rich. Having nothing, yet possessing everything. Y'all, what is absurd is not that we live in a world full of violence and viruses and Vladimir Putin's. That's all par for the course. That's all just part of our sinful, sorry, predictable nature. Now, here's what's absurd. What is absurd is that God loves us anyway. What is absurd is that God forgives us anyway. What is absurd is that God is the God of second and third and fourth and fifth and eight billionth chances And nothing, not even our death, can ever separate us from the mercy that He chooses to heap on us when we give our broken hearts to Him. So yeah, you know what? Today is a happy Ash Wednesday. Not just because we're not shoving palm branches into microwaves and dealing out ashes in little plastic baggies. And not even just because it feels like maybe the pandemic really is finally behind us and God has brought us full circle back together again. No, y'all, this is a happy Ash Wednesday because against all reason, God loves us. It turns out maybe that's all any of us have been looking for this whole time anyway. Amen. Amen.